you will please. The first book of Samuel, chapter 7. Let me read from the first verse. Listen carefully. And the men of Kerjath Jearim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kerjath Jearim that the time was long, for it was twenty years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of, the, out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Baal, Balaam and Ashtaroth and served the Lord only. Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah. And I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, they said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel, and when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And here's the part I like. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord heard him. Everybody say that. And the Lord heard him. Mm -mm -mm. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel but the Lord, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel. From Ekron, even unto Gath, and the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah and judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house. And there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. Bow your hearts and let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for the reading of the Holy Scriptures. 
And I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will mantle every soul under this tent tonight. Hide your servant behind the cross. Let us see no man save Jesus tonight. Prepare the hearts of the people. I claim every sinner and backslider. Lord, those that are driving by, cause them to stop and come in to see what's going on. Those that are running from you, let them know they can run, but they can't hide. Holy Ghost, sick them. I mean every one of them. Knock them down and drag them to the foot of the cross. On this opening light, on this opening night, I pray for souls. Don't let a one be lost. We commit this service into your hands for the anointing of God to come alive in every heart. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody shouted amen and amen. I am reading as a text. Chapter 7 of 1 Samuel, just a portion of verse number 12, the last phrase, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Ebenezer, which means a stone of help. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Now, this particular story is a story about a revival that came to the children of God, Israel. They needed a revival. A revival means bringing back to life that which is dead. Every one of us know what it is. Now, my message tonight is to you. We are living in troubled times. And if ever we needed a revival, we need it today. The first thing that I notice in this chapter is the complete failure of God's people. And many times God has to allow us to get into that place of total failure so man will recognize his need for God. I believe America is a living in that situation right now. A complete failure of people themselves after the inability to lift themselves out of their helpless condition. America is in a helpless state right now. You that are listening to this broadcast may be in a helpless situation. But this chapter is a call for help. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I'm talking about Israel. I'm talking about the people of God. I'm talking about the church. Our nation needs a revival. Our church needs a revival. And we as individuals, we need a revival. And we are going to have a revival. Can you shout praise the Lord? I'll never forget reading the story of a woman who was on the deck of a ship whose son fell overboard and he was drowning. And the sailors were gathered around that particular area where he fell in while the mother was crying out in despair, Save my son! Nobody responded. He went down the first time. Popped up. Went down the second time and popped up and mama is frantic. Won't somebody save my son? And the third time he went down and come back for the third time and then a sailor jumped in and saved his life. When they brought that boy to the deck of that ship, his life was saved, but his mother said to the, to the sailor, Why did you wait so long to save my boy? Why didn't you jump in and save him quicker? He said, I had to wait until his strength was gone or he would have pulled us both under and we both would have been lost. And I believe that this is the condition of the church in America right now. I mean, the strength is gone. All hell has broken loose. But when I see the strength of America, that has been lost, 
when I see the strength of the church that has been lost, then I'm looking up because I know it's time for God to move because in that situation of failure, we're going to see the hand of God move in a supernatural time. I see nothing but good that's coming over the horizon. We are in revival. Turn around and look at somebody and say, we're in revival. We're in revival. Oh, I know we can go around and say, you don't know the troubled times that we are in. But I want you to know that that nation of Israel was politically cor corrupt at that time. It was morally and socially corrupt, just like America is today. And the, even though we see what's taking place, I can look up. Eli, the priest, was 98 years of age. And he had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And they were corrupt. The priesthood was corrupt. Preachers that stand behind the pulpit are corrupt. People in the choir are corrupt. People in the pew, they're corrupt. Before we can help a world out there that's corrupt, we got to get rid of the corruption that's in the church. Church, we need a revival. We need a mighty moving of God's Spirit. And I'll tell you, we're on the verge of the greatest move that God's ever had. The ark was taken captive. It even seemed like God failed. The ark was captured and taken to Dagon's temple, that false god that they bowed down to, the enemy, the Philistines. Are you listening to me? There's a lot of people that use religion like they use a fetish. But I want you to know the power is not in the man. The power is in the ark of God. The power is in Christ. The power is in Him. Can you shout amen? God hasn't failed. Man has failed. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah. God's people said, bring the ark in. Bring it in. And when the enemy saw the ark coming in, they said, oh, what is this? This is the people that God delivered from, from Egypt. The ark of God is symbolic of God with them. We are doomed. And a young man in that Philistine army said, quit yourself like man. Be strong and go out after them. They lost thousands of people. God's people failed because they weren't living right. I didn't come to pat you on the back. I come to preach the word. I come to tell it like it is. I come to tell you it's time to get ready. I said it's time to get ready. Jesus Christ is about to come back and he's coming back for a church that is holy, a church without a spot, without a wrinkle, and without a blemish that he might present it unto himself. We're living in revival time. It's time for you and it's time for me to make ourselves ready so God can do his thing one more time. Hallelujah. We're going over to Bray House before I leave. Bishop has the custody of that right now. And I told Bishop Blake today, I want to go over there with my whole crew and we want to pray in that upper room. This is revival broke out at the turn of the century. And I believe this is no mistake of us being here on this property in this day. I believe God's going to pour out another Holy Ghost Pentecost. And I believe we're going to be right smack in the middle of it. Revival is coming to America. And it's going to start right here in Los Angeles again. We're going to see blind eyes open. Deaf ears unstopped. The lame are going to walk and leap for joy. Souls are going to come to Christ. Drug addicts are going to be delivered. Alcoholics are going to be set free. Not because of a man, but because of the Holy Ghost that's going to come alive. The power is still in the ark. 
Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah. Israel failed. The church failed. And it seemed like the ark failed. They took it captive. They put it in with Dagon, right alongside Dagon. Now we got them. The next morning they came out and Dagon was falling on his face. They picked him up and set him up again. Come back the next morning and he fell again. His neck's broken. The head came off and he's nothing but a stump. His legs are gone, his arms are gone, and the only thing that's alive is the ark. The power is in the ark. Are you listening to me? The church might be dead, but Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. He is the ark. He's the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. We have failed, but thank God we are coming back. Hear me, Ted Koppel. Keep your hands off the church. Hear me, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Keep your hands off the church. God didn't call you to judge no church. God called the church to judge you. They're out in that world. The church is through a time right now. God is renewing the church. Revival has come back. We're going to take our rightful place. We're going to see a demonstration of God right in the middle of the church. And I'm going to be part of it. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn around, look at somebody and tell them, say, I'm going to have everything God's promised me. You people that are in these wheelchairs, get ready to get out of them. I said, get ready to get out of them. We're living in a day when we're going to see a demonstration of God's power like we've never seen before. We're going to see limbs grow back on bodies. We're going to see legs that have been amputated. We're going to see them come back on again. We're going to see the maimed made whole. Bible days are here again. I know the church has failed, but we're coming alive in this last day. We are going to have a revival. Oh, hallelujah. I'm reading from that first book of Samuel, chapter 7, the last phrase of verse number 12. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. This is our Ebenezer. Hallelujah. We may have strayed away, but we've come back. Hallelujah. We may have failed, but we've come back. Devil, I'm back. I said, devil, I'm back. Hallelujah. The devil tried to kill me. The devil said I wasn't going to preach no more. But the devil is a liar. Can you shout amen? As I stand before you, I come to tell you I'm a dead man on furlough. That devil should have killed me when he had me, but it's too late now. I have come alive. Hallelujah. I've had the failure, but I've come alive. You precious people that testified tonight, the devil had you in his clutches. He had you selling your body to get money, to pump your body full of drugs. You were on the verge of an overdose, but God saved your life. That devil ain't got no sense. He should have killed you when he had you. Honey, but it's too late now. Now you're held as a counselor, delivering somebody else. I'm talking about a God that saved you and delivered you. Hitherto has the Lord helped us. Don't sit there and look at me so sanctified. You were a mess before God got a hold of you. If it wasn't for God, you'd have been dead a long time ago. How many of you know it's true? Hey! My, 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 I feel it. The preacher's come right now, folks. I feel like preaching now. 
Thank God. I recognize we failed, but we come back. I said the church come back. God is going to pick his church up and use it. This is the only way he can help that world out there is through his church. God works from him to the church and from the church to the world. The world might as well get ready because the church has come back. Revival is here and we're going to bring deliverance to the people that's in that world out there. We have your answer. We have have your answer. We recognize the failure. But what we need is a revelation of God. Back in those days, God didn't even have a priest. The sons of Levi, they were corrupt. So God had to raise up his own revealer. He had to reveal himself, a woman who was barren. Elkanah and his wife Hannah, she cried out to God for a child. But she had no child until God heard her cry. God gave her Samuel. She said, Lord, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. God said, I'm going to keep you to your word. God's going to use him. Samuel became the greatest prophet of God that ever lived. This is the revealer to the people. This is the revelator of God. God always has a man. Are you listening to me? There may be preachers that have failed, but God has somebody else that's going to rise up and serve him. I had newspaper reporters come under my church, under my tent in New York City. He said to me, I hear all you evangelists are crooks. I said, you talking to one of the good ones, brother. I said, how come all you newspaper folks, you always zero in on the no goods? I said, Jesus handpicked 12 men and one of them was a devil. But 11 of them changed the world and brought revival to the world. Hallelujah. That ain't bad. Just one out of 12. But I want you to know for every bad one, God's got 11 good ones that's doing what he called them to do. They laid their life down as a sacrifice. Offered unto God a living sacrifice filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And now they're a revealer of what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. God's going to use every one of you. The day of the big preacher is over, folks. God's raising up an army of believers. Joel's army's coming alive. Amen. That's what we're here for with Angelo. Angelo Metropolis is taking a crew out on the streets. Every one of you, he called you to heal the sick. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers I got here? Well, then you ought to have some signs following you. You know, the church got it backwards. We're going after the signs, and we're following the signs when the signs ought to be following us. Go into the hospitals and anoint them with oil and let them know you have something on the inside of you and pray the prayer of faith and deliver them and set them free. Can you shout amen? You are the church. God works through his belief. He didn't say these signs shall follow the preacher. But these signs shall follow the believer. That's you. And that's me. We are a witness of what God has revealed to us. There had to be a total. There had to be a total. Forgetfulness of what the leaders have accomplished. The leaders have failed. And many of our, I didn't say all of them, many of our leaders have failed. But God will never fail. I said God will never fail. Hallelujah. In later history in this Bible, you will find that prophets fail. Priests and kings fail. They failed to give God the glory. Judah and Israel was destroyed and defeated. 
Jerusalem was brought to ashes under Nebuchadnezzar. But even with all of that tragedy that took place, there was three young men by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refused to bow their knee to a false god. There was another man, his name was Daniel, that was thrown in the lion's den because of his integrity to God. Four of them! God has somebody that's going to serve him. I made up my mind I'm going to be one of them. I said, I'm going to be one of them. Are you going to be one of them? Lay your life on the altar of God as a complete sacrifice and say, Lord, use me to bring deliverance to this world out there. Somebody said, will God use me? He'll wear you out. He'll use anybody that wants to be used. He'll pour his spirit into you. Hallelujah. But there has to be a crucifixion of the flesh. You have to die in order to live. When Jesus died on that cross, he died with you hanging on there with him. When Jesus died, Shambach died. When Jesus was buried, Shambach was buried with him. But when he come out of that grave, Shambach came out in newness of life to do the works of Christ. Revival is here. Can you raise your hands and shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. You want God to use you? Oh, he'll use you. Thank God for three men like Shadrach, Meshach, and Shambach. I mean, the bed and the goat. And he's looking for men and women today who will not turn their back on you. Amen. I love these three boys. I mean, they had it up here. They had the smarts. They not only had God, they had the smarts. Nebuchadnezzar, he put them in charge of provinces. They became mayors of cities in Babylon while God's people were in bondage. Hear me. When God begins to elevate you, others don't get jealous of you. Some of you folks that are saved, you came from a big family. The rest of the family were educated, sent to college. But when it came time for you, they ran out of money. But I want you to know God always picks up a nothing. I said he always picks up a nothing. And he makes something out of nothing. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to town to tell you he's going to pick you up. The church is too busy playing patty cake in those upholstered pew. But God's going out into the highways and the hedges. He's picking up the derelicts. He's picking up the, the drug addicts. He's picking up the harlots. He's saving them, washing them in the blood, filling them with his spirit, and sending them forth to do the works of God. That makes me want to holler, folks. Now I'm reading from the seventh chapter of 1 Samuel. The last phrase of verse number 12. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. He's raising the standard. Hallelujah. The Ebenezer is held high. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I had a young man that was in prison right here in California. What's the name of that prison? San Quentin. He was thrown in jail when he was 12. Hear me now. Keep this radio turned on. Don't turn that radio off. I have a lot of prisoners listening to me, but I want you to know there's more people held prisoner behind stained glass windows than you that are behind bars. Don't y'all get mad at me now. This man came to testify. He said, thank God I got arrested. 
He said, thank God they sent me to prison. Because he said, I was a sinner. I sold drugs. I was a drug addict, a drug pusher. He said, I robbed people. And in San Quentin, when the guards went to sleep at night, they turned the radio on. And they let the prisoners hear what they wanted to hear. And once it came on, they couldn't change it. And they said, what do you want to hear? The golden oldies. So they put on the channel that produced the golden oldies. But what they didn't know, before them golden oldies came on, they had to get through Shamba. <laughs> we bought time on that radio station. I mean, those prisons, prisoners were jumping on radios. They didn't want to hear the Word of God. This young man heard it, jumped on it, had to buy another radio, tuned in again, and he listened and listened and listened until God saved him. In San Quentin, got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. He wrote my office. We sent them literature. Bible studies broke out. Where? In San Quentin. A revival broke out in San Quentin. I want to see revival break out in our church. I want to see revival break out in you and in me in this last day. You know what he told me? We put it on radio. You might have heard it. He said, God established six churches behind bars. A revival broke out in San Quentin. His father came to visit him. His father was dying with cancer. His daddy had nothing to do with him all those years. He kicked him out of the house into a life of crime. His dad came to visit him to make everything right because he knew he was going to die. And he and his son embraced and got everything right. He said, son, I'm dying with cancer. He wept on each other's shoulders. He said, I come to ask you to forgive me. He said, Dad, you don't have to ask me to forgive you. He said, thank God they threw me in jail. He said, you got a brand new son, Dad. He said, I'm a new creation. He said, I've been born again. I've been washed in the blood. He said, oh, yes, Dad. I want you to know you ain't going to die with no cancer either. He called all them prisoners around him, and they laid hands on his daddy right there in San Quentin cursed that foul devil of cancer. God healed that man. He was set free from San Quentin and now he's an evangelist going around the country preaching Christ. Shout yes! God saved you for a purpose, folks. We're living in the most unique time in history. God's kept me alive for it revival. God gave me a mandate to win a million souls before Christ comes. And we're going to do it. I couldn't wait to get here. We had that tent up in Detroit, murder capital of the world. We had this tent up in, in Harlem, New York. We saw thousands of souls come to Christ. Oh, I tell you folks, Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for a church. A church that's busy. I want to see God do something in your life while we're here in this revival. You need a miracle in your life. You're going to have it. Can you shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. You may be in bondage now, but God's going to set you free. So you can help somebody else get free. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 I had a young man in my church in Newark, New Jersey. I anointed him with oil and put a bottle of oil in their hand. And I said, no, God, now go find somebody that's sick and heal them. This boy didn't have a lick of sense. He went into the hospital. He didn't have no preacher's license. He didn't have no exhorter's permit. All he had was a bottle of oil. And he's doing what his preacher told him to do. Now, he... You're supposed to sign in with the chaplain when you were in the hospital. He didn't sign in with nobody. He didn't know how to do it. He's just going to lay hands on sick folks. 
got in the elevator and went to the top floor, started laying hands on everything and, and anointing them with oil, pull them out of the bed, you're healed now, go on home. He cleared off that top floor. they gone home in their pajamas and in their, in their slippers. And the nurses down on that first floor said, where are y'all gone? They said, that doctor told us we're healed. We're going home. Hey! There's a world out there waiting for you, beloved. He moved down to the next floor and went into the accident ward. People that were in traction. They were in, ac they were in accident victims. And here they were in traction. One with a leg up. One with a head bandage, another with an arm. And there were six doctors around, one little woman over there that died. You don't have to tell anybody in a ward when somebody dies. They know when death's present. Now, he didn't walk in there and shout and go, hmm, ma, 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 ha. Oh, he didn't do none of that. He just crawled in the wallpaper. And he waited till them doctors were done. And when they walked out, he walked over, pulled the sheet down got that bottle of oil out and he rebuked the devil of death and called her spirit back into her body. I told you that boy ain't had no sense. And she spit and sputtered seven times and she come out of that bed totally healed with new life. Everybody in that ward, even the man in traction with that leg up, he didn't ask him whether he's a priest, a rabbi, or a preacher. He just hollered, hey, bring that bottle of oil over here. My God, if it'll raise a woman from the dead, it'll heal me. I want you to know a world out there is waiting for you. Hallelujah. It's time to get bold for God. We know what it is to be bold for the devil, but I want you to know we need a Holy Ghost boldness today and put the devil where he belongs. That devil ain't got no business on your back. He ain't got no business on your chest. He ain't got no business in your heart. He ain't got no business in your legs or in your feet. That devil ain't got no business in your family, in your children. There's only one place the devil has any right to be, and that's under your feet. Your elder brother destroyed him 2,000 years ago. And he said, now behold, I give you power over all the power of the devil. Hallelujah. I feel this all over me tonight. Revival. 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 It's here. I said it's here. I'm going to forget them notes. I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 7. The last phrase of verse 12. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. If we're going to have revival, then there have to be a repentance. Nobody wants to hear this. Somebody said, well, I repented 13 years ago. You need to repent again. <laughs> repent means to turn around. Repent means you're going to be different. Repent means you ain't going to do the same things you've been doing. That's repentance. Hallelujah. Pray to the Lord for us. They cried out to Samuel. He said, I'll cry out for you when you repent. God, I love this about this man. Everybody looking for a shortcut. They sneak in the prayer line. Think nobody knows you. That man may not know you. God knows who you are. That man couldn't heal you. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the one that's going to set you free. You may be able to fool your mama, fool your papa, fool your husband, fool your wife. Very rarely fool your wife.
but you ain't never going to fool God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll never forget when I first got saved. I love to tell this story. I got saved on a street corner back in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I was working in a market, running home from work one Saturday night. And there's a preacher out there on the sidewalk preaching with a loud speaker. And I ran. I put it in second gear. I ain't about to listen to no crazy preacher. I put it in second gear, and I ran faster. And all of a sudden, he hollered over that microphone, Hey, sinner! I stopped. I said, who knows me around here? I knew I was a sinner. Are you listening to me? I knew no theological terms whatsoever. I didn't know what salvation was. I didn't know what redemption was. I didn't know what repentance was. But when I heard that man of God preach, and the next words, he said, you don't have to sin anymore. Somebody carried your sins 2,000 years ago. The best news I ever heard. And he asked those that wanted to come to Christ to come. I turned around and made an altar out of a curb, right on the street. People laughing while they're going by. Now, they heard the same thing I heard. How come they ain't on their knees? I'm the only one that responded. You're not going to be blessed until you respond. You're the one that has to respond. When you hear the Word of God preach, He wants a response out of you. And that response will either be yes, Lord, or no. There ain't no in-between. Somebody say, well, I'm on the fence. There ain't no fence. You either going to heaven, you're going to hell. Ain't no purgatory. You're either saved or you're lost. You're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. Come on, I didn't come to put butter on this thing for you. I come to lay it out the way it is. It's time to repent. We need a repentance in the church. These are God's people. Israel. And hear me, when you repent and you get right with God, all hell's going to break loose. The Philistines showed up again. Philistines, nothing but the enemy. You see, the devil ain't never going to bother you until you get saved. I had a woman come into my church in Newark some years ago. I used to fly back every Sunday morning and preach, every Sunday. Then go back in my revival, preach every Sunday in the church. And she got up one Sunday morning, she said, Oh, Brother Shamba, she said, That devil been after me all week long. I've been going through hell. I said, Welcome to the family, Mama. She said, I've been in the church 30 years, and that devil never bothered me. But I come here last week and got saved, and all hell broke loose. I said, You answered your own question. You that are going through trouble, listen to me. That's God bragging on you. The devil's trying to destroy you, but he ain't got no sense. When you're going through all this hell, look up. God's getting ready to put a double anointing on your life and send you forth to do the works of God. He's getting ready to use you in this last day. Hallelujah. Are you going through some testing? Are you going through some trial? Oh, church folks will say, you must be sitting and going through all that hell. Uh-uh, honey, I'm living right. And the devil knows that, and he's trying to mess me up. I know. I'm not ignorant of the devil's devices. I know. I know the hand of that devil's trying to destroy everything in my life. But I made up my mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to make heaven my home. I'm going to live right. I'm going to turn my back on sin. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to get sanctified. I'm going to get filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. And I'm going to do what he called me to do. When I got up from that curb, I didn't know what happened to me. But it felt like I took a shower on the inside. That's the only way I knew how to explain it. But I sought out the church of that man. That man of God, he's still alive. I was preaching in Tampa, Florida. He was there. I introduced him to the people. Put that microphone in his hand. 
I made a mistake. I ain't going to never put it in his hand no more. <laughs> He's about 85 years of age, and still the fire of God's burning in his <laughs> Hallelujah. Old preachers never die. They just blaze away. On fire. Can you shout amen? We're on fire, but we're not consumed. We heard that last night. On fire. I want to see every one of you get on fire in these 10 days. You want to, you want to burn? You want to burn for God? You want God to do in this last day? You want God to work miracles through you? you? Get a miracle for yourself. Hallelujah. You in these wheelchairs, God's going to heal you so you can go heal somebody else. He's going to deliver you and set you free so you can go set somebody else free. That's what revival is all about. We're here for nine more nights, folks, and I believe we're headed for the greatest move of God that we've ever been in. I feel it saturating in my own spirit. Hallelujah! About two hours ago, you told somebody, you're going to get a miracle tonight. Didn't you do that? Turn around to them same folks and say, "Uh uh-uh, tonight's my night for the miracle. You got to believe this for yourself. Uh Uh-uh, tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. You're too beautiful to be in that thing, darling. Amen, amen, amen. It's time to come out of that thing. God bless her. Oh, hallelujah. It's time for revival. I said it's revival time. It's time to repent. It's time to get right with God. It's time to come back to Him. Can you shout amen, somebody? Repentance. And when you repent, the devil's going to try to attack you. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the devil. I'm not done, but I quit. (laughs) Blessed is the preacher that knows how to quit. (laughs) Raise your hands and make some noise while that big old 18-wheeler's going by. We can make more noise than he can. Hallelujah! Be seated for a few moments. I'm talking to every one of you that are here tonight. Nobody move for two minutes, please. Souls are being weighed in the balance. God's bringing the scales in under this tent. You weighed in the balance and you found one thing. This opening night is your night. I don't care how many times you tried. I don't care how many times you failed. I'll guarantee you he will pick you up. If he don't, I'll quit serving. Because I know the nature of God he forgive you how many of you here tonight know that if you died within the next 20 minutes you'd make heaven your home let me see your hand you know that most of you it's wonderful there's a lot of you didn't have your hands raised you're the ones I'm after now you that has your hands raised I want you to go out and find me some sinners get them in here It's wonderful to know that you're a child of God. I had a young man and his his girlfriend came to me in Seattle and he looked at me. He said, hey, preacher, am I saved? I said, no, sir. Why, he said, you don't know me. I said, I don't have to know you. If you have to go around asking somebody, am I saved? That's a sure sign you ain't saved. You're going to be the first one to know it. His spirit will bear witness with your spirit. 
that you're a child of God. I want every head bowed, every eye closed in prayer, please. Nobody moving for about 120 seconds. Two minutes. If you want my prayer tonight, you want to make your peace with God like I did on a street corner. You've been running from him like I was. Thank God he found my hiding place. He wouldn't turn me loose. He's caught up with you. This is your night. You'll never be able to point your finger at this preacher in the day of judgment and say he didn't give me a chance. You're getting it now. It's either heaven or hell. It's either Christ or the devil. I come to town to tell you Muhammad is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Hari Hari Krishna is not the way. Mr. Moon is not the way. You go higher than the moon. You got to get to the sun. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. If you want my prayer, I'm going to count to three. That's it. And if you want my prayer, three will be your signal. Throw your hand up when I say three. That's your signal. When I start counting, you'll have 30 seconds to make your decision. You may be away from God. You may be a backslider. I'll guarantee you he'll take you back. But all over this tent, get your hand ready. You that are standing outside this fence, God may be talking to you. Thank God just stop to listen. Get your hand ready. This is your night. Here's the first one. 30 seconds. One. Counting down to eternity. Where are you going to spend it? It's your decision. Hear me. God sends nobody to hell. We send ourselves by rejecting the only plan of salvation. He's the only way. Here's the second one. 15 seconds. Here it is. Two. Get your hand ready. 12 seconds. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl within the sound of my voice, you outside the tent, I'm talking to you too. This altar calls for you. I'm going to pray for you. God sent me here for you tonight. This is opening night. This is your hour of deliverance. Your time has come. Get your hand ready now. Five seconds. This is your night. This is your night to be liberated. Here's your signal all over the tent. Here it is. Three. Shoot it up. Shoot it up. Shoot it up. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, quick, quick. You that have your hands raised, stand to your feet. The rest of you, keep your eyes closed and your head bowed. I'm going to pray for those that are standing. You that raise your hand. Come on, get your hand. You, I want you to stand. Let God know you're not ashamed. He wasn't ashamed to be stretched out on Calvary for you. Don't you be ashamed. Thank God. Now I'm going to pray while you stand there. Anybody else want to get on this prayer? Listen. Quickly, jump to your feet. I, I, sense, I sense there's some, somebody else God's talking to. Please. This may be your last call. Don't turn him aside. Thank you. Anybody else quickly? For a pray. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad I waited. Come on. Anybody else quickly? For I pray. You put your hands down while you're standing. Be comfortable just for a moment. I'm going to pray. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, every one of these that are standing, as the servant of God, you said whatever I loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Satan, I address you now. Every one of these that are standing, you can't have them anymore. They belong to Christ. This is their first night of eternal life. And in the name of Jesus, I command you, loose them and let them go free. Then I turn around and bind that devil. So he can never attack you again the same way. This is your night. Keep your heads bowed. You that are standing, look at me. Look here at me for a moment. Jesus wasn't ashamed to be stretched out on Calvary. Suspended between heaven and earth with nails in his hands and feet. Jesus said, if you'll be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. But he said, if you confess me before men, 
I'll confess you before my father. He's the great high priest. Let God know you're not ashamed. I want you to get in the near style and meet me here for about two minutes. Quick. Let God know you're not ashamed. That's it. Come on. You're coming to Christ. Sing the song while they come. Coming to Christ from all over. Come on. Counselors, come with us. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. They're coming to us. Audience, stand with me if you will, please. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.